Do you ever wish that you could read your Bible more, but you feel a little intimidated, you are not sure where to start, or you worry if you're even going to be able to understand it? Hey, I don't blame you. As much as the Bible is a powerful and life-changing book, it's not always easy to read when you're first getting started. That's why today I'm going to walk you through an easy step-by-step -step process that you can use to get started reading the Bible, even if it's your first time. Now, if you're somebody who has read the Bible before, you kind of know what you're doing and you know your way around. You just need a little bit more help getting motivated and staying on a consistent routine with your Bible, then go ahead and check out the show notes because I have some really great articles for you. But if you're somebody who is brand new or fairly new to reading the Bible in the first place, you don't even know where to get started, then absolutely stay tuned because this podcast is for you. All right, so if you are brand new to reading the Bible, today I have eight tips I wanna share with you that are going to help walk you step-by-step step through the process of getting started reading the Bible so you actually get something out of it and you can actually enjoy it. Step number one is to choose the right Bible and translation for you. You see, Bibles come in a variety of different translations, and some of them are a lot easier to read than others. If you have a King James Bible, that is traditionally one of the more difficult versions to read. It's still readable, but you might have a more difficult time reading and understanding it. If you have an easier translation, however, it's going to be a lot easier to read it and understand what it says. So a very common translation that I use personally is the NIV Bible. Um, it stands for New International Version. That is a pretty common one. Other common ones that aren't very difficult to read would be like the ESV Bible or NASB are other Bibles that I have used or even the New Living Translation, NLT. I know that's a lot of letters, um, but if you need a recap on those, definitely check out the show notes um, because I have a whole post that will walk you through kind of how to choose the right Bible for you. Another thing that you want to look out for is the type of Bible. So in addition to the translation, you can also get something that's known as a study Bible, which basically has additional information and materials to help you understand what you're reading. So a normal Bible is going to be mostly just like words on a page. Um, just Bible verses and not a lot else. And that is great for reading the scripture, but if you have more questions or want to dig in deeper, it doesn't have a lot of explanation. So another option that you can do is to get what's known as a study Bible. And these are widely available. You can get them just about anywhere. Um, but basically what a study Bible has is it has, in addition to the verses, it'll have a column on the side or at the bottom that has additional information or that explains what some of the verses mean. So if you come across a verse that is confusing, um, you can look in the margin and see if there are notes on that verse that kind of explain more about what that's talking about, answer some questions, or that might point you to other parts of the Bible that help that part make sense. So having a study Bible, this is a very common type of Bible. A lot of people have it. Um, you can find them anywhere and that's going to be really helpful. Or if you want something that's super easy, um, I forgot to mention this in the translation section, but you can also get a message Bible. This is a kind of like a Bible. It's not the word for word Bible, but basically what they did is they took the original Bible and they translated it into a modern language that's easier to read. So it's more of a paraphrase than an actual Bible verse by verse. But if you want something that's super easy, totally, um, modern, easy to understand, so you know what you're reading. This is a good version as well. Uh, I wouldn't go to it for a lot of deep theological questions, but if you are just getting started and you want to get in the habit of reading the Word, this is going to be a lot easier to read and understand. So if you're someone who's brand new, this would be a good place to start. Um, the next thing that you need to do is number two, decide where to begin. So when reading the Bible, it is common for people to think, oh, well, I'll just start on page one in Genesis and read all of the way through. But that is a super common mistake I do not want you to make. Do not start on page one 
in Genesis 1 and just try to read through from there. Um, you're going to do fine in Genesis. Exodus will probably be okay too. But once you start to get into Numbers, Leviticus, um, Deuteronomy, those are some of the most difficult books in the Bible right up front. So the Bible kind of goes kind of in chronological order, but kind of not. So basically the Old Testament is the books of the story of what happened you know, thousands of years to 400 years before Jesus was born. It was before Jesus, um, basically the start of when God created the world, he created um, his chosen people, and then it follows their story all the way up until a couple years, 100 years before Jesus was born. That's the Old Testament. The New Testament picks up when Jesus is born or right before he's born. Um, and then it goes through Jesus going to heaven and the early church and ends up in Revelation, which is kind of a prophecy of the end times and things that are to come. So in broad sweeping terms, it goes in chronological order, but you don't want to start at the beginning. My best advice to you would be to start at the Gospels. Those are the first four books of the New New Testament. And if you look in any Bible, it'll have a table of contents and it'll tell you where the Old Testament is and the New Testament is. So if you want to start in a book like John is a fantastic book to start or start in Matthew, that's the first book of the New Testament and start in those books first. Those are going to be the easiest to read and understand. Um, and they're just really great books to start off with. So you can start reading about Jesus being born, his time on earth, um, and all the way until he goes to heaven it will give you kind of the gospel, the message of the Bible in a nutshell. From there, I would recommend going on to read the rest of the New Testament. The bulk of the rest of the New Testament, save for Revelation, which is the last book. Um, but everything between the Gospels and Revelation is pretty much letters that were written to the churches, to the early Christians to tell them how to live. These are very applicable to us today still. So you can read and these will have a lot of the verses of telling the Christians, here's how you should behave. Here's how you should not behave. Here's what you should know. You know, here's how to be a Christian. And these are going to be really helpful and really practical as you live out your life today to say, okay, here's um, what life looks like for a Christian. Here's what life should be like, um, as well as lots of messages about God loves you and all kinds of encouragement like that as well. So I would do the Gospels and then the letters. Um, you can read Revelation if you want or just skip it for now. And then after you read the book of the New Testament, then go back to the Old Testament after you already have a really good grasp and handle on the New Testament because the Old Testament is going to be a lot more difficult. You might start in the Old Testament with books like Psalms. Psalms is a really big book that's basically just full of songs that people wrote a long time ago. Um, some of them are praising God for how wonderful he is. Some of them were written when the writer was very low in life and really depressed. You can just see the whole range of human emotions. Um, and that's a good one to read. Also, Proverbs is right after Psalms. That's a great one to read um, because it's basically just wise instructions and advice, um, general life principles to follow. And after you've read all that, then I would go back to Genesis 1 and start reading through. Like I said, the first couple of books are going to be the easiest to read and most interesting. Um, and then once you get through the rest of the Old Testament, it gets more difficult. But by the time you've gotten that far, you already kind of have started to increase in biblical knowledge, know what you're reading, understand kind of the story of the Bible, um, and have those good Bible reading habits by the time you get to those books. Uh, I don't want to dissuade you from reading them. They're, you know, still biblical, life-changing, wonderful books with lots of advice and information for us um, and knowledge about how God's people lived a long time ago, but I just wouldn't start there. So, after you have chosen your Bible and you've decided where you're going to start reading, preferably in the Gospels if you're brand new, your next step is number three, read through the Bible slowly. You see, unlike other novels or instructional books that we might read today where you could sit down and read multiple chapters at a time or even read an entire book in a sitting, there's no way you're going to read the entire Bible in a sitting, nor should you try, especially if you are brand new to reading the Bible. The way that most people, as far as I can tell, read the Bible is just to simply sit down and read a chapter a day. And that is a great way to start if you are brand new to reading the Bible. So the Bible, once you get into it, you'll notice it is broken up. And you can see in the table of contents um, into the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then each of those sections is broken down into the books. So those are individual books 
that people wrote or letters um, that all comprise the Bible. And then each book is broken down into chapters and then verses. The chapters are going to be the big numbers and a chapter might be like half a page or a page, whereas the verse is only going to be like a sentence or two. So if you go through and read about a chapter at a time, that's a really good way to get started. So you're not overwhelming yourself trying to read all of the things at once. Um, but you're just getting in. Now, if you want to read more and you feel comfortable reading more, absolutely, by all means. Um, but I just would caution you not to approach the Bible as a novel that you're going to read straight through, but that you just read a section at a time and really dive into that section and make sure that you understand it and try to get as much out of it as you can before going on to the next section. So that brings me up to the next point that I want to tell you. Number four is to reflect on what you're reading. So by this, like I was talking about before, don't read the Bible like a novel where you're just like skimming through quickly looking for basic facts and information. The thing about the Bible that makes it so amazing is that it's not just words that somebody wrote thousands of years ago as a story and then we still read that story today. The Bible is actually the living word of God in which God himself speaks to us through the words as we read them. And it's kind of difficult to understand and wrap your head around, but basically what this means is one set of words in the Bible can have different life meanings for different people or different applications. I don't mean that one verse can, you know, be something and not be something at the same time. I'm not talking about the Bible contradicting itself, but I'm talking about it's very common as people read through the Bible, that they will read a verse that will apply to their life and that they can use that knowledge and insight and advice they get from the Bible specifically in their life in a way that's going to be different than somebody else's. So if right now you're really worried about finding a job, you might read a verse that's really going to encourage you as you're looking for a job. Whereas somebody else who might be dealing with a family member who has health struggles might read that same verse and they could also be encouraged in what they're going through as well. Because when we read the Bible, we're not just reading flat words. God absolutely talks to us through his words as we are reading them to communicate with us, to share his love with us, and to tell us more about him and more about how we should live our lives. So that's why I really want you to take your time as you read the Bible. Don't try to rush through it. Don't just look for the surface level facts and information, but really take your time to look over each passage and glean as much from it as you can. So ask yourself questions like, what is this Bible you know, passage about? Who's in it? Start with the surface level questions and then ask more things like what, you know, what insights can I get from this passage? What can I learn from this passage? What does it tell me about how I should live my life or how Christians should act? What examples am I seeing in this passage, either good or bad? And you can go through and ask yourself some of these questions and find just the insights and the knowledge and what kind of information is the Bible giving you? How can you then take that and translate that to your life? And don't worry if you don't get it all right away. Nobody does. We, um, myself personally, I have been reading the Bible for years upon decades now. Um, but there's always so much more to learn, no matter how many times you've read it. There's so much more you can gain from it. Even if you read something and your pastor reads something and he has a different application than you do, that's okay. Um, because we all, there's just so many layers to it. There's so much to get out of it. So that's why I'd really encourage you not to rush through it, but to really just take your time and gain as much knowledge and insights and wisdom from each passage as you can. All right, number five, study confusing passages. So I will be honest, parts of the Bible are easier to read than others. And some parts of the Bible are downright confusing. And that's okay, because the Bible is not just a simple like novel that somebody wrote. It is actually the word of God that he gave to people to write down to give to us. So there's a lot to it. And there are going to be parts that you don't understand. In part, just because if you're brand new to reading the Bible, you might not have the biblical knowledge to understand the whole picture. Um, there's parts like, you know, a part from the Old Testament will help further explain a part from the New Testament. And there's just so much information in it. It can feel a little overwhelming and it can be really easy to misunderstand a part of the Bible if you're just reading that one small part or that one small section. And this is where a lot of people get in trouble with the Bible because they find just one verse and they're like, well, obviously this verse says this. But if you read it in the context of 
the whole biblical story, you have to compare it to other verses and kind of see what the writer is actually trying to say, which may be a little outside what you initially think when you just read that one sentence out of context. But I don't want you to be overwhelmed by that or feel like you can't do it because you can just understand that the more that you read your Bible, the more you're going to learn. And it's totally normal and totally fine to have lots of questions along the way. That's great. But what I want you to do is rather than just sit with your own questions and be like, I don't know what this means. I don't understand. I think it means this, but I'm not really sure. It seems like it contradicts. Go ahead and look up the answers to your questions. There are lots of ways that you can get information um, to help answer your questions and to help you understand confusing passages. So I do have a few things that I have on hand and there are free versions of these online as well. So for example, there is such a thing as a Bible concordance. And basically what this means is that if there is a word that you're not really under sure if you're understanding it right, um, for example, something like love or respect or submit um, or anything, if there is a topic you're not really sure of, rather than just reading the one verse you found about it, you can look up that same word in a concordance and it will tell you all of the times that that word shows up in the Bible. Um, and that can be really helpful because if you want to make sure you understand what the Bible says about respect or submit or whatever, um, look up that word and then you can go read all the different verses and read the chapters that they're in and like study it across the timeline of the Bible. And that will give you a much fuller picture. So I have a concordance. There are concordance concordances in the back of several study Bibles. They'll have um, at least small ones in them. And there are tons of resources online that you can use. You can look up Bible concordances online. They are free. Um, you can also look up if there's a verse that you're not sure about, you can look it up in multiple translations. Um, Bible Hub is the website that I love to do this on or Bible Gateway will provide this as well, where you can get on there and just look up a single verse and it you can choose the different translations. Bible Hub will actually show you all the different translations side by side. So if one doesn't really make sense and you're like, surely that is not what the Bible is saying, you can get in there and see, okay, how did other people translate it? Um, because you have to remember the Bible was originally written in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, not in English. So what we have is just a translation and sometimes things get lost in translation. So reading some of the other translations can help you understand. Um, you can also Google different articles online. There's tons of articles um, on every different thing that you could think of and just Google uh, whatever verse you're thinking of and see, did somebody write an article about this verse? Did somebody write an article about this topic? You do have to be careful with what you read a little bit because anybody can publish things online. So just because it's online does not mean it's true, um, but it can help to give more insights and information. And as always, you can always email a pastor, call, you know, call your pastor. You can email me and ask questions and say, hey, I'm reading this verse. I'm not sure if it means what I think it means. Can you help me understand what this means in context? And if you are not sure yourself, being able to talk to somebody who has read through the Bible and studied the Bible over a long period of time, they will likely be able to give you a lot more information about, okay, well, it makes sense if you understand what was going on at the time, or if you understand it in context of this. Um, and those are all just knowledge and insights that you'll have to gain as you go. So, um, don't be afraid to ask questions because that is totally fine. All right, number seven is to find ways to make your Bible reading more enjoyable. So I hope I have not scared you off by saying that sometimes the Bible can be confusing or overwhelming because it can, but it can also truly be enjoyable and you can get a lot out of it. But that might mean that you're looking for ways to help make the Bible reading process um, more enjoyable along the way. So if you are just taking a plain, simple Bible and sitting down and like, okay, I'm going to read a chapter um, and you're not getting a lot out of it, there are several things that you can do to help you get more out of it and make it more enjoyable. Um, for example, you could get a Bible study. There are tons of Bible studies out there on every different topic imaginable. Um, there's even apps like the First Five app or She Reads Truth. Um, I do, I will link in the show notes. I have a whole article about really great Bible study apps, so I'll link that as well if that's something that you think would be helpful to you. Um, but you can use these apps and go through and they will walk you through step by step 
as you read the Bible, you'll read your passage and then there will be something alongside of it explaining it or telling you more about it so that you can get more of the context that you might not know otherwise. And that can really help bring the scripture to life for you and make it more interesting for you. Um, you could also read with a friend. If you have a friend who wants to read the Bible as well, say, hey, what if we read this together? You know, you don't even have to be in the same room. Um, but what if every morning we both read our Bibles and then we texted each other or we called each other or we got together once a week and we talked about the things that we were reading. And several of these apps have these as well, um, as well as a lot of churches will have Bible studies available at that church. So you can go read with a group of women together to help you understand it um, and to see what everybody else has to say and all of their insights and information that everybody has to share. And again, don't feel overwhelmed by any of that. If you are brand new, it's totally fine. If you, you know, have more questions than answers, that's fine. You can show up, listen, participate when you want, and it's totally fine. But don't feel like if you're sitting down and you're reading your Bible and you're not understanding it and it's boring and you don't know why you're doing this, don't feel like you have to be stuck there because there's definitely things you can do to make your Bible reading more enjoyable, to get more out of it, and to read it together with community. All right, the last thing I want to share with you is I have on the Equipping Godly Women website several awesome resources that will help you as you get started reading your Bible. So the first one is the Quiet Time Planning Guide, and this guide will help you determine what your quiet time looks like. Quiet time is basically a fancy word for sitting down in quiet to read your Bible. It doesn't even have to be quiet, um, but basically sitting down to read the Bible every day. So what does that look like? When are you going to read your Bible? How are you going to read your Bible? How are you going to make this happen? It has some worksheets to help you stay focused, to help hold you accountable, and so that you can really get the most out of the quiet time that you spend with your Bible. Um, so you're not just flipping open and reading a couple of verses here or there, but that you're actually really enjoying it and getting a lot out of it. I also have some other freebies on my site as well, such as a Bible journaling sheet that you can use as you read your Bible. Um, so basically you just fill in the passage that you are reading and then take a few notes as you read. And it's pretty simple, um, but it is designed to help you really focus on what you're reading and get more out of it. So you're not just like absentmindedly skimming verses, but you're sitting down to say, okay, here's what I'm reading and here's what I think it under here's how I think I understand it and here's what I think this means. So if you think that those resources would be helpful for you or you want more information about choosing a good Bible translation, um, how to sit down and read the Bible, how to get motivated, how to understand it, any of those kinds of things, I have so many resources on my website that are going to help you. I will link them all in the show notes. So definitely make sure that you check that out. Out, and I hope that this helps. So honestly, reading the Bible really is life changing. I know that that sounds cliche, like, oh yeah, it's going to change your life. But when you learn how to read the Bible and you read it regularly and you understand it and you apply it to your life and you use the Bible to make your decisions, um, to help you make those wise decisions, to help you love others, to help you just have your best life and have a great relationship with God. I can tell you from experience, it makes a world of difference and it is absolutely worth it. So definitely go ahead, check out those resources if you think that they'll be helpful for you. And if you are a Christian woman who wants to grow in faith and love your family more, I would also encourage you as always to go ahead and sign up for this channel if you have not already. There's a subscribe link Elsewhere on this page, I would love for you to subscribe. I come back regularly to share all kinds of knowledge, helpful information and advice to help you be an amazing Christian woman. And I would love to have you as part of our community. So definitely go grab those resources, check out the show notes and subscribe today if you haven't already. All right, hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.